Hello, and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today I am very happy to be joined by my old friend, Mr. Barry James. Barry, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Bart. Pleasure being here with you. Yes. You're one of the last living students of George Lawrence Stone, the um, amazing teacher, PAS Hall of Fame um, educator, and I would say most famously the author of um, Stick Control, which is kind of one of the gold standard drum books. You're exactly right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So today you, this is very exciting, have just released recently a new book that um, it's it's by Barry James with Joe Morello, which we'll get an explanation of that here shortly. And I'll let you you, you start telling us. But um, it is called Counting Stick Control. The key to understanding, counting, and playing the exercises in stick control. The classic drum method book by George Lawrence Stone. So, Barry, take it away. Tell us all about this brand new book. Well, it, it's interesting, uh, Bart, uh, in that um, when I first thought of or talked about the book, I had gone to a, a, a clinic that had, having been done by Joe Morello. He was brought into Orlando to do a clinic here. And all the local drummers, both amateur and, and professional people, of course, all wanted to see Joe. And, and they went to the clinic, and I went as well. And Danny Gottlieb, who brought him in, said, hey, by the way, we got another, we got this, one of your stone buddies in the audience. And he pointed towards me. <laughs> and and Joe looked at me, and of course, Joe was blind, so he, he had some problems there. But he pointed at me and said, afterwards, I want to talk to you afterwards. So... We did that and on the way out after he just knocked everybody out with his clinics, you know, and to see Joe Morello do a clinic, it's it's like, uh, wow, you know, <laughs> how, how does he do that? You know, for example, he'll, uh, he, one of his closing uh, parlor tricks, I call it, you know, is that he would have uh, somebody in the audience say, pick a, pick a number from one to 12 and somebody would yell out 11. Uh, so we start playing 11 beats to a, a measure, you know, on the snare drum with his right hand. You would play 11 and count them, one, two, three, you know. So you would know you were at 11, one, and you go, you'd accent the one a little bit so that you would know you're back to one again. Somebody else name a, another, uh, you know, uh, number from one to 11. Somebody would yell eight. So then he'd take his left hand and start playing eight along with the 11, you know, he's playing. And then somebody else pick a number. Well, three. Okay, three with his right foot, and then, you know, seven with his left foot. And he's playing four different time signatures at the oh, same time. Geez. With his four uh, <laughs> limbs. And I'm saying, what is <laughs> this, you know? I, it just blew everybody's mind away. Uh, what did he do? Split his skull in four places and using using one for each, each, uh, each number? No. Yeah. It, it was just that he had complete control over over whatever he played and this this is what stone used to call and joe called in his books polyrhythm where you can play more than one rhythm at a time using another another limb you know a different limb and so and he, he's a master of that and you know i i i made the foolish uh, mistake of asking him on the way out the door <laughs> how'd you do that joe <laughs> oh. <laughs> And and he laughed, and we got a good laugh out of it. And anyway, we were walking out. He invited me to go for for a coffee at his hotel with with uh, Danny and Danny's wife uh, Beth and a few of the other guys that came a long distance to see him play. And of course, uh, coffee at his hotel is usually it means a little hooch. You know, <laughs> yeah. we'd have to have a little hooch. Sure. And that's where we went. And we were walking down the driveway towards towards the cars that were going to take us to the hotel. And and Joe said to me, look, Barry, have you ever had a situation where you're doing a, a private lesson or you're doing a group lesson or a clinic or something, and somebody says to you, how do you count, you know, page 46 of the stick control book? I've never been able to figure out how to count it. And I said, all the time. I get that everywhere I go. Every time I get a new student or get a, you know, a, a, a professional student. And he says, yeah, he said, you know, he said, we're the only ones in existence right now. Joe was still living, obviously. And uh, he said, we ought to write a book on how to play the book. Because nobody knows how to play the book except for the Stone student. And we're the only two Stone students living this far. Well, at the time, uh, Vic Firth was living. 
but he was in his own bag, you know, sure. uh, making and selling drumsticks and so on. So I said, you you want to? He said, yeah, I want to. He said, but here's the thing. I, uh, you know, I'm blind. I can't do any of the, you know, any of the studies on this thing. I said, I'll do all the research as long as we can come up with the answers as to how Stone counted these exercises and stick control. After all, it's a book of R's and L. The entire stick control book, which is the best selling technique book for drummers ever, ever. It's still after, you know, it was written in 1935 and it's been selling anywhere from 22 to 25,000 copies a year. Wow. A year. For all those years with very little advertisement, the, the Stone family has taken it over. It's still the family, it's the family treasure, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so we wanted to, you know, get their permission to do something. And we said, let's, let's do a book on how to count the book because nobody knows how to count the book. Well, when I first talked to Barbara Haynes, uh, Stone's granddaughter, she said, we know. He said, Be the, because most people who buy the stick and draw book never finish it because they can't count it. There's no count in the book. There's no counts at all. It's just R's and L, right and left. Well, if you're a mechanical engineer, you might be able to figure it out, you know, using all the, you know, eighth note count, 16th note count, and quarter note triplets and so forth. You yeah. can figure it out. But let's get it from the man himself. And I said, you know, when I studied with Mr. Stone, he taught me all the count for stick control. And Joe Murillo said, yes, he did me too. So apparently he was taking his private students and teaching them the count, but, you know, didn't make it public knowledge. Because otherwise, there would have been a lot more people that finished stick control. I also asked some of my students and some of my uh, teacher friends, you know, I said, on average, I said, how many people who start the stick control book finish it? Uh, 20%. Eleven uh, percent, you know, uh, what they, they they finished up to about page uh, nineteen. Nineteen? <laughs> That's not going through the book, you know. How yeah. can you do that? And the way you learn stick control, and the way you learn how to get good solid technique, is to play the book as written all the way through, no skipping because I don't know how to count it. So that's what Joe and I decided to do. We read a book on how to play the book. And that's and that's exactly how it came to be. Except we got waylaid a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that happens. Yeah, it happens. So we were we were about four years into you know getting all the information from the Stone Library and and from the uh, the, uh, the a lot of the articles that Stone wrote for Modern Drummer Magazine, the Union Magazine. He did a, a, a column a, a month, and oftentimes he would mention. He would mention the stick control book and the counting of, of a particular exercise, but wouldn't go through the whole litany of um, uh, of each exercise, you know. So Joe and I decided we would do that, and we got into it. And then as we were going through it, we realized that there was a lot more material of stones in these columns that he wrote for the, the Union magazine, the International Musician, which is the, the magazine that Stone wrote for for almost 20 years. And he would answer, you know, drummers' questions. And hmm. that question came up quite a bit as to how do you count a particular exercise on a particular page and stick sure. it. And so we decided to write the book. We started writing the book. I went to New York to the, to the archives and pulled out all I could find of the Stone articles and uh, then found out that Barbara Haynes had those in nice, clean form and was able to send them to me, uh, the, the granddaughter. And uh, so I, I had a nice clean copy. But when we also found out that Stone also wrote an article on drumming in general, you know, and how he taught the instrument in general, we said we'd be better off, you know, holding off on the book on on the count and getting into the book of of solos and and lessons by Stone. Yeah. So we changed directions. We started writing the, you know, just the sort of looking through all of the articles that still published with the union magazine over the years and we started pulling them out looking for the most interesting one and doing them in stone's own words rather than joe remembering what stone taught him about you know single paradiddles we we made sure that when, when we did put that in in our book it would be in stone's words not ours 
Because sure. we're, we're not teaching stone lessons. Stone is teaching them. So the book is very authentic. It's called Drum Lessons with George Lawrence Stone. It's yep. been published now since 2019. And it's a book that everybody should have. They call it, you know, the companion book, the stick control. And and the, the, the uh, Stone family has honored me recently by putting the ad for Stone's lessons book, the book I have there, out. Uh, on the, on the rear cover, they're advertising my book rather than so many other books by the publisher. Sure. So it's been it's been a wonderful journey with the Stone family. I feel like they made me a part of the family, and they're wonderful people to deal with. And uh, and they're doing so much now to save their grandfather's legacy. That's how that came to be. And when Joe said to me, "Hey, we ought to write a book on how to play the book." And then we said we agreed to do that. We started calling each other on the telephone on Sundays and, and you know, sharing ideas and sharing stories and all. And then, like I say, about five years and, and half the book done, we decided to change positions and, and write a book in, first on the Stone Lesson, Lessons with George Lawrence Stone, full lesson with him. And we thought that would be more valuable to start with because you know Stone's stick control doesn't follow that route. It, it it basically follows the route of here's how you play a nine stroke single, here's how you play a nine stroke double, here's how you play a nine stroke buzz roll, and and uh, and and that goes with all the rudiments. He taught you how to play all the rudiments. So uh, that's what happened. We ended up you know going going in, into the new book, and unfortunately, Joe passed away. And uh, and uh, I, I I didn't really have you know a, a lot of motivation to finish either book, so that they, they just went on the shelf for a while. And then guys like uh, Bart and uh, and uh, Jason Edwards and some of the other professional guys that I ran into, and Danny Gottlieb and so forth. They uh, and, and Mario the cutest, by the way, uh, and uh, they they convinced me to get my Stuff back in shape again, and and uh, and and do those do both of those books, and I did. So yeah. the first one came out, like I said, two thousand nineteen, and it's a companion book to Stick Control, but it's, it teaches the the lessons that can be garnered from the Stick Control book in in just the way Stone taught them to us, but in Stone's language, not ours, you know. And that that's what was the beauty of the of, of that first book. And people call me all the time now when they order a book, and they'll they'll say, "Man, now I understand what stick control is all about because he's using the same concepts that he did to build the technique of a drummer, but he's using rudiments to frame them and get them in the right spot." So that that worked out nicely. And then more recently than that, after Joe passed away, and after we did the the uh, the book. Uh, Drum lessons with George Stone. Then I started working on this other book having to do with how to count stick control. And my friend who's here today is Tom Cook. He was very helpful to me because, as you know, uh, I'm not going to weigh on this, but uh, I, uh, about six months ago, I was uh, uh, told that I had cancer of the liver. And, um, and th- th- that's been a problem, you know, trying to do the medical thing. Sure. Like, and keep and keep on top of that. Yeah. You must have more time, you know. And 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 that's that's what I've been doing. And uh, finally, we we actually started talking two books. You mentioned one of them, and that's the one which which is how to count the exercises in stick control, which Tom here helped me write and finish. And that's the book we're here to talk about today. It's so that you can take any exercises in stick control. Let's just say, as an example. There's a section in there using single stroke rolls to play a seven and a nine single, you know, so it's like, and it starts off with a setup number, like one and two and, and then if you want to play a nine over there, so it's one and two and three and a four and a one. So one and two, and with all the different sticking involved. Okay, let's do the same thing with double stroke rolls. One and two and da, 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 da. 
Ta, 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 so you got a nine stroke ruler. Let's do with, with the buzz. Well, the buzz just need some sticks for. Da, 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 buzz, 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 buzz. Da, da, remind, reminding us, as Stone would do, hey, when you do a buzz roll, you don't have to play 16th notes. You can play eight. One and two and ba, 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 one. Three and four and one. Well, the three and four and count is two. So that's just like playing three and a four and a one. It's, yeah. it's, in a, it's in a nine stroke roll. Well, most people, most of the students doing it, and unfortunately, most professional drum teachers doing it have not a clue how to count that, you know, and it's a simple count. It gets more difficult as it gets towards the end of the book when they sort of mix and match the singles, doubles, and buzzers in, in nines and elevens and thirteens and fifteens. Uh, but at this point in time, it's a good way to start it off and, and to take each change of rhythm throughout the whole stick control book. And if you've got a uh, table of contents, which takes you to the next one and the next one and the next one. And all you have to do is if you want to play page 31 of the book is to, to say, go to the table of contents 31 and it'll show you where the count is, the stone yeah. counted. And these are the stone counts. They're not mine, they're not Joe's. They're, they were taught to us by George Stone. And George Stone, for some reason, as I said before, was not freely given to pass out th that information to everyone uh, that he meets. He basically kept that and he had what they call handouts. He, almost every lesson you go to, he'd have a handwritten page of a handout of something that he was trying to get across just to his students. They didn't go anywhere else. So I have a, a box or two of, of handouts from Stone's study with Stone for four years. And, um, and it, it's been a wonderful, uh, you know, indoctrination for me. And I realized uh, on, on a couple occasions, I thought, well, uh, you know, I've been teaching from stick control now for 30 years. Enough of that. Let me try another book. And so I do. I won't say what book I tried, but I tried them for two or three months, went right back to stick control on every case because I knew that the students could only get to that point where they had complete control over their hands, their fingers, and, and their arms if they do, if they use the stone method to do it. You know, I know there are a lot of others, the molar and so forth, that are wonderful things, uh, you know, wonderful series of, of exercises as well. But there's something about the stone movement and, and, and how, how your hands move, your fingers move, that is superior to anything that's out there. I know that because I've been teaching it for what? A lot of years, you know. Sure. Maybe yeah. now. So, you know, you, you figured I started when I was right out of high school, when I was, you know, 17, 18 years old. And I've been doing it ever since. And, and I can tell you, Bart, and this is for everyone who's listening. You know, study any technique that you feel is going to be helpful to your genre of music. But don't, you know, forget to play stone and play from stick control, accents and rebounds in this new book on how to count the stick control exercises. And and uh, right there, you'll have enough chops, enough technique that you can play any genre, anywhere, using any hand, at any speed, and, and any volume. Yeah. It's it's just that easy, you know? Well, I think it's important to mention that like when you go through stick control, like you were talking about it before about how uh, it is laid out in a way by George Lawrence Stone, who is, you know, famous teacher. There's a, there's many great teachers, but him in particular, it's laid out start to finish in, in a system that will get you where you want to go if you follow it and don't jump around. And so you kind of just talked about it a little bit there a second ago, but why would he not? I mean, minus wanting to get personal students to come to him, but is there a reason he didn't put the count beyond just wanting to have to give out the handouts that it is just R's and L's? I mean, what is the actual, is there really like a, a reason that he would not include the count on, on in the book? Boy, uh, that, that's the, that's the question of the century. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, I, I just know that, uh, you know, the, I, 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 went to school, of course, with people who studied with Stone, and they would get what I got, you know, they would get a piece of paper every 
every week when they went to the lesson. And it was another subject that he was on at the time. And and uh, and we would go home with it and we would practice and come back and uh, and apparently be able to play it well. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. And uh, but but uh, if you were a student that was not a part of the university program, and he you were say uh, a middle school or junior high school in those days uh, student, uh, you know you were paying for lessons just like everybody else was. But for some reason or other. Yeah, maybe it's because of the the young age of these these students that they didn't get the same handouts we got. They, they'd get something a lot simpler hmm. to play. You know, we'd be yeah. they'd be stuck on the on the standard rudiments, as an example, the paradiddles for for three months or something. And um, so, I but your question is is something that I I've, I've tried to figure out for the longest time. Why didn't you just give everybody the same handouts? You know, and even though the kids were younger. That were you know his students and and uh, not as but not as private students. If he went and taught in his school situation, he didn't he didn't give anybody handouts. Then he gave him an hour lesson, personal lesson, and that was it. Um, mm. So so yeah, he was he was so, somewhat uh, you know not giving of of, uh, of his personal knowledge of how he wanted something. And and it's a great question, and I don't know the answer. All well, I know is he all I know is he didn't give the same handouts to all the students. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, and and I would say that having both of them together, Stick Control and your new book, which the book that you have, which is Counting Stick Control, I mean, at this point, you are producing them and binding them and selling them. And just so people know right up front, with your uh recent, you know, health issues. Mm -hmm. I think it's just kind of if you get this book, it is not only extremely beneficial and uh, dare I say, like essential to really knowing that you're doing the right thing when you're counting this book and you're teaching from it. But also um, it's a really good way to just to help Barry and support him and Joe Morello. It's just like it's just so much history. And like I mentioned before about how it says by Barry James with Joe Morello, I think it's great that you are still including him because obviously he was a big part of it. You know what I mean? You guys did this together, yeah. um, which from what we've talked about over the years of just kind of talking about it would be, you know, long conversations, which you and I are accustomed to of just talking on the phone for an hour and then <laughs> <laughs> you just lose track of time. But um, have, we, have we missed any real good meals though? No, no, that's true. <laughs> but, but, but then you're the one who actually boiled it down and then with the help of Tom Cook and I know um you know you you do a lot of stuff with Jason Edwards you you kind of bring people into your orbit who really love spending time with you but but to kind of get it distilled down to this book is yeah. just super cool so um still lots to talk about but I just want to tell everyone this is pretty affordable and and, and honestly you it's not every single page from stick control that's included right. in this, but you do get a lot of notes. You do get a lot of the actual notation from stick control in this, but it'll say like, this is page 27 exercises seven through 12 are counted like this. Like you go back and forth and you work your way through yeah. it. And, um, and a lot of that was Tom Cook's idea to yeah. write general notes on the, in the individual pages. Cause it's about as close as a handout. That, that we could have gotten to, you know, yeah. these general notes. And and uh, and, and Stone, uh, you know, he, he was an old-fashioned gentleman. He had a very healthy sense of humor. He would, he, he could, he could joke with you and then, you know, pull it all back just like this. You know, he did, he, he did have a, uh, uh, you know, even, even in his newspaper column with, with the uh, union magazine, he had like words of wisdom. For example, he would answer um, people, you know, drummers' questions on uh, that they mailed into the magazine, and he would answer them and, and pick them up. So the, uh, one I can remember says something about uh, these these uh, two drummers from Milwaukee or someplace said, you know, Mr. Stone, uh, we've been studying from stick control for a while and so forth. But the truth of the matter is, and I want you to either agree with me or not, that it's not really necessary to learn the 26 at the time rudiments. And he said, we don't have to know any more than two. 
we need to know the single stroke role and the double stroke role. And once we know those two rudiments, we're all set. We don't need to know anymore. And Stone's answer was very simply, he said, well, that's true in, in a way. He said, but how many words can you can you put together if you only knew A and B? That's true. And that must yeah. have just set them down. Wherever they were sitting, they must have sat down. You know? Yeah. It makes so much sense what he said. Yeah. And yet he, he, he didn't do it in a put-down way, but he just, that's that the truth. He's a teacher. You know? Yeah, he's trying to teach them and yeah. not be you mean. Learn, and... two, learn two, two rudiments out of the 26 and you're all set. Really? <laughs> well, let's try that. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I get that sort of feeling of like, um, well, I only need to do this much. But it's like once you, I don't know, it's a little daunting at first to kind of get in to learn all this stuff and go at it. And and the, But from my past, which again, I've been a bad student from having kids and moving and stuff, but taking lessons with you, um, it is, it can be like kind of as an adult, I don't want to say embarrassing, but you're kind of like, oh, geez, I didn't learn this when I should have when I was younger. And then when you're 30 and you're trying to learn stuff, you're a little like, it's like you've built uh, like a really good solid foundation of drumming and being able to play, but there's still, you can go back in and it's never too late. I've learned to backfill and I've, I've, I need to pick exactly, up my exactly. studies. But You and I yeah. have had this conversation before and, and I tell you, I don't care how old you are. I, I've, I've had students that are, you know, four years younger than me, meaning they're, they're 79, they're 68, they're, you know, they're, they're keeping up with me in age who, who decide they want to study now. You know, they moved from the, from the city and they moved to a, a, a golfing community here in Florida yeah. and they say, well, I'm going to play golf. Well, that only goes so far. And then they start saying, yeah, I used to play drums when I was a kid. Maybe I'll start taking drum lessons again. And they do. And then all of a sudden they, they they have new meaning to their life. Sure. They're not playing golf five days, six days a week, you know? Yeah. Which which, which really bored them. And, and 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 because it's it's musical, you see, it's it's you know, you're talking about playing drums without the concept yet, not yet, that you're playing a musical instrument and that everything you're gonna play from now on is is an etude. It's a musical piece that you're gonna play. And once you play it, and you you learn it and you play it, all of a sudden you own it, and then you say, "Wow, you know, I sound pretty good on that group, on that groove." You know, yeah. And there are so many good things that weren't there when I was a kid that you can play, and in so many books, you know, I I remember telling Mr. Stone, I think in my second or third year with him, I said, you know, I he was talking about getting ready for a for a recital in school. And he said, you know, I've got to, I got to get you something on xylophone or marimba because all the things you got prepared are on drum set, you know? And, uh, we again, I said, well, tell you the truth, Mr. Stone, I just want to be a jazz drummer. I, I don't, I don't, I, I want to play in jazz bands and, you know, show bands maybe, uh, but, but I don't really want to play xylophone or marimba. And uh, I can't say that too loud because Mario will get mad with me. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, you know, it, it was just the way I did it. And he said, well, you know, you, you, you're studying with me and I'm expected to teach you these instruments. So I'm going to have to find something. You're going to be able to play a recital. And he did. He did. He came back the next week. He said, I found a piece that's not too hard. It, 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 it's a nice classical piece by Claude Debussy. And it's, and it's, uh, oh, well, that's, that's, that he's a very fine, you know, French composer. Okay. Well, you're going to play it on, on marimba. So we go over the marimba. And he said, play this. I, I messed it up, you know. <laughs> I, I I I didn't have the chops to, to play it. And uh, so then he said, well, take it home. We're, we're going to do eight measures a, a week. And, you know, by the time it's over, it's only a 48-measure me tune. It's repeated. So he said that shouldn't have any problem. It's a pretty song. It was called, and I, I don't know why this is coming to me now, uh, La, La Fille de la Lou Chalou. In the, in the, uh, the English translation is The Girl with the Flaxen Hair hmm. by the time Debussy. And it was a beautiful piece of music. And I, da, 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 I, I, I got I got more attention from playing Claude Debussy than I did from playing Joe Morello. You know, <laughs> Joe was wonderful. 
uh, to, to all drummers and and uh, and and I, I feel badly for all the drummers who didn't get a chance to meet him because he was a he was a hoot man. He was a yeah. character and had a wonderful disposition. And like most people, like yourself, and I can tell you that the greatest philosophy that the great players have. Uh, maybe we'll have to think about Buddy Richards and lay him off this particular one. But uh, but for the most part, every drummer that I know, every professional drummer I know who's at the top of their game, who really knows their thing, who will know when they look at the stick control book that this is the way, this is the only thing they need now to figure out what the count is on all these exercises in stick control. And you know they, they play stick control over and over and over again. Uh, most most professional drummers. What are you What are you playing this year? Stick control. What are you playing next year? Stick control. You know. Now yeah. I'm going to going to try playing it with my with my feet. I mean, if you had to for people who maybe haven't used stick control or worked through it, which it really is one of those books where um, I don't know. It's just kind of it's on everyone's shelf. It's just kind of one of those things, which you were kind enough years ago to send me this and uh, Syncopation, which I think Syncopation is another one that's just incredible and, and, and a, a great book. But if you had to put it in its simplest terms, um, you know, what makes stick control? Why is it the most, you know, the top selling, the best drum book? It's not it's it's simple. It's it's just it's. You know, it's hard to put into words, but why is it such a famous and iconic book? Well, uh, again, you ask all these good questions. Um, I, I think I think it's because there are so many examples, particularly it's drum teachers with young students who are very impressed. The students are very impressed when they hear the, the teacher play, and the teacher will say, "This is from stick control. I learned this by studying such and such a page or pages in stick control." This is what you can learn from stick control. It's considered a lot of people call it the Bible of drumming, you know. Mm -hmm. And and so when when you get into that that cusp, if you will, of of, um, of 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 being able to make progress with your playing, just by doing the most minimal uh, exercises and and uh, and spending the the a little bit of time on on stick control you can gain far, far more than you put into it. You know, they say, well, you are what you put into it. Well, in, in stick control, for some reason or other, you gain knowledge and you gain experience and you gain finesse on the, on the drum set just by playing it over and over again a few times, you know, just by using the muscle memory that you have. And yeah. it's an easy thing to do, you know? Yeah. It, yeah, it, it it sort of lays things out in a standard form that every professional drum teacher should know how to play. And sure. guess what happened? When the first time I was on your show and we were talking about the drum lessons with Stone, believe it or not, I, I, I started getting calls from people who wanted to take some lessons on the Stone method, you know? And I was happy to do that because that's what I do. I, I have more professional teachers studying with me than I, than I have, you know, standard students. So, uh, we started, we started doing that. And, and, uh, I, I had by the end of maybe two weeks, I had about 30 students from you hmm. uh, from the, that, that heard your podcast. Awesome. And, and so I, I started taking them on, you know, and I, I would ask them, well, you know, I'll ask you the same question. You just asked me, how do you play page, you know, lesson 46. And on page 46 in stick control, he says, university, university. I said, what? <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> university, university. This is a professional drum teacher now. This is the guy that teaches students how to play it. Yeah. And I said, university. Well, it could be in 5-4, I suppose. You know, yeah. da, 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 da. But this thing isn't written in 5-4. <laughs> how did you how did you come up with that you know and you know embarrassingly he said look i you know i i didn't have anything to go with so he said i just went with what i thought would work and i i put the one two three four five by one two three four five or one two three four five you know mm. I, I would i would measure the distance between the notes and and i when you know first a t 
you know, person feet, you know, something like that. And uh, way long, way wrong on on the play. And and you wouldn't want your student going out trying to play that in in any way, shape, or form because it's wrong. It's just wrong. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't play right. You're going to use the. I guarantee you're going to use the wrong sticking. You know, in five notes. Yes, sure. what? We we need an extra finger or an extra hand. You know. Yeah. And and uh, so you know, it's best to learn it from the master the way he meant it to be, and you know, you know, just have to believe. I mean, really, I just. I quickly opened up. I went. I went to your the the index. I went to the index and said it said you know source. Uh, it said page forty six, and then in your book it's page forty two, and you can go and look at it and learn. And it's like it's very easy to use. It almost reminds me of like a um, I don't know, like for lack of a better term, like a teacher's guide, like the teachers. Right. You know what I mean? Like a teacher would have behind the what kids would try and steal and get all the test answers and things like that. It, it's like <laughs> the teacher's edition, so you can you can just like have this, but. I would say that it's not just for teachers. It's for anyone who wants to like uh, actually have a little bit of a greater appreciation of it. Exactly, and that's that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, like I say, I, I, I'm and I, I'll just give myself a little uh, a little uh, uh, re- reminder here that I, I even though I have the cancer and I'm fighting that, I, uh, I I'm still teaching. I'm still taking on students. And but what I'm doing with them is I'm doing them in uh, monthly, four monthly lessons, and I and I I have enough information and I have enough handouts, if you will, and so forth, and the book that will be given out with a lesson, the the, the new book, um, to go ahead and and uh, get a good, you know, professional drum teacher who wants to learn the thing correctly, and I'll give them four lessons. You know they'll be inexpensive, you know, and and uh, and th- they'll allow him to be able to read the stick control book to his kids correctly, and and uh, that's that's what it's all about. Just trying to trying to get everybody on the same page, every drum teacher on the same page instead of everybody going off half hammered, you know, and uh, or as, as, as Joe Morello would call it, sloshed. <laughs> you can you can't have drummer teachers out there sloshed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I, I just want everybody to learn the same method, the same count. And it's just it's you know, the thing of it is, it's not hard. It's not a university university thing. It has nothing to do with names of of uh Rip Van Winkle or anything. It has nothing to do with it. It's all counted just as if you were to count a musical thing. If you were dealing in 16th notes and 16 16th notes, one he ended, two he ended, three he ended, four he ended. There's 16 16th notes. If you say, yeah, I want a 17 stroke roll, okay, one he ended, two he ended, three he ended, four he ended, one. Right? Yeah. It's, no, it, it's not difficult, you know? Yeah. And then if you want to miss in, in double strokes, when he ended, do we end three he ended four he ended one? So if you sit trying to measure a uh, numbered roll, uh, we'll call them numbered rolls because that basic call them number rolls. And if you want to count it, or you can do it as singles, doubles, and buzzes, and you can and you can all use the same count and all come out the same way, all come out the same tempo, all all the feeling. Now there are a couple of difficult parts. Remember that. In 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 this book or any book that you're going to have, we're trying to measure the same distance between, say, let's say, in, in, in Stone did this a lot. He 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 wrote in cut time, and cut time is two two time. It means two half notes to a measure if you want to get down there like that. And so it's not like. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's that's four four time, right? And in the bass drum will be dum dum dum. Now, so that's four four time, and everybody knows that time. Waltz time is in three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Six eight time is like a shuffle. Da 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 da
da, 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 you know, if you want to work on St. Patrick's Day or something. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, I've done that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so you've got that. So now all of a sudden, you, the stone comes up with this concept, two, two time, two half notes to a measure. And it's called cut time. And it's a C with a slash through it. It's like common time, four, four. But this has got a slash through it, it means cut time or two, two time, two half notes to a measure. So now it's one, two, three, four, one, two, because you're only playing two, two bass drum notes to a measure. One, two, three, four, one, oh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So one and three, if you will, or one, sure. two, one, two, um, what we've heard then. You know, the old rag thing. One, two, 1935 now, remember? But yeah, the, really. The, the two, two time is this, you know? Well, it, how does that relate to the stick and draw book? In many, many ways, because there's a lot of exercises in there in 2 2, and everybody tries to play them in 4 4. And at the first it, part of the book, that's the single stroke roll with five, six, and seven in the book pages. And, uh, and when you play those, you can play them with a four, four touch on the bass drum, but they're the only place you can play them because everything else is one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, da, 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 it was in those days. You know, you look at it in an old book, but the old book gives you such pronounced answers to all of these questions about time and how time works with other time signatures, not easily known by people. Um, it, it, it'll show it to you because in, in the end of Stone's book, he does mix and match the, te the tempo. Yeah. He'll have, a, he'll have in the first measure a five stroke roll double. And then in the second measure, uh, a seven-stroke roll buzz, you know, and, and and he does this all the time. And this is what makes him different from a lot of the other teachers that were out there. They can only teach you in one time signature at a time, where Stone breaks it up. You take a look at the the book that he did. Uh, I was actually in school with him when he uh, in, in taking lessons with him when he did this. It was in the late 1950s, and it was called Accents and Rebound. And there were two sections. The accent section were, were exercises that Joe Morello wrote for him. And this, the, uh, the accent and the rebound section were how to play double stroke rolls in, in, in Stone's own, own version of them. And boy, you know, you, and, and I hate to even throw this in there, but you know, if you take stick control and, and the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the second book, uh, the companion book, the other book we did, which was drum lessons with stone. And then you took this co 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 compendium of, of, of counts for the stick control book. And then you took the accents and rebound book. Holy cow. It's a lot. You have a, a majestic, <laughs> uh, you know, set of technical rules and, 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 and musical playbacks that you can use for the rest of your life. And yeah. it, it's just uh, it's just an amazing, amazing concept that Stone came out with. Absolutely. And, and we're, we're happy to be a part of it. We're happy to continue the Stone tradition along with the family and so many others. And you, where you can get training in the Stone method that's going to be complete and is going to be accurate, you know, other than coming to study with me, which would be maybe more short-lived than long-lived, but still <clears throat> we can do that or and uh i'll, I'll leave uh, my information for anybody who wants it but when we you also get into the situation where all these drum teachers who have been faithful to the, those particular stone books uh, are, are now completely completely comfortable with the way the stone method works the way it, 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 it just follows itself perfectly. Like you said before, the, it, it seems to be right on, right on, on level with, with the last page you did. You're just moving forward. You just see, you see yourself moving a little bit further away, uh, around as you go on, you know? 
Sure. You don't have to go very far with within one page or two pages. You get enough to cover the whole spectrum of of, uh, of singles, doubles, and buzzard roles, and also all, all the flam exercises that you can work with. So it, it's it's a it's a no nonsense set of books. Yeah, it. I mean, it's just uh, it's it's unbelievable. You are the you are really just bringing this to the public, all of this knowledge and just getting everything out there. But I do want to mention, because you did, you said, you talked about it a little bit. I took lessons with you for a while, but a lot of people from the show have uh, have joined up with you and taken lessons. But uh, so you, as I said earlier, are the last, one of the last living students of Stone. There is a gentleman who you found out about later who is a little bit older, but I, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, you said he's not teaching so you were the last living he, he, teaching. He was, he was a youngster in a grade school. And I guess after Mr. Stone retired, he took on a few students in the band program at the local middle school or high, uh, junior high school, they call them those. Uh, and so he let me know that, you know, hey, you you weren't the last student of Stone. I was. <laughs> I, was in, I was in the second grade. Oh, and man. I used to take a lesson on Wednesdays with him when he'd come to school and work with our band director. And I thought that was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's great. But I will say you are a, I mean, real deal. You're, you're teaching as, as true to form as humanly possible to what Stone was teaching. And um, lots of people have come to you for lessons. And I want to mention that just right up front, and I'll put this in the description and everything, but if you want to take lessons with Barry, um, it's Barry James Drummer at gmail.com. If people want to get in contact with lessons, uh, to take lessons with you, that is okay, right? You, you're you doing oh, kind of... I like to do as many lessons as I can and just get people into the, the basics of his technique. You know, he's got this level system that he came out with that really help your, your stroke and your volume uh, of playing when you do that. It's a whole different thing than, you know, counting stick control. But it is it is an important concept, you know. Yeah. Um, and of course, Stone used to say, you know, he had had a poster in his in his studio that said, in order to play fast, you've got to start playing extremely slow. As a matter of fact, you have to play slower than slow. You you have to play in slow motion, and you have to play very consistently and quietly, and that's the only way you ever gain speed on drum is not to play it fast and not to push yourself, but just the opposite. Yeah. You very slow and, and deliberate, you know, in your playing. And Definitely. I found that that's true. If I get Mr. Speedball in, in the, in the studio and I'll say, well, let's, let's try a single stroke roll, but don't go too fast. <laughs> Holy cow. You know, <laughs> I said, well, slow it up, you know, but yeah. you know, and it, it's very true. The, the way you gain speed playing drums is to is to start slow, and just gradually build up, and not go no further up speed wise than your and then you, your hands and fingers can handle. Because otherwise, you're defeating the purpose. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes perfect sense. And uh, when I took lessons with you, which I plan to do again, I actually I hadn't I've been pretty out of practice, but I was playing. Uh, I jammed last night with some friends, Good. my brother on bass, a guitarist and a singer. And um, I was playing drums, obviously, and we were playing and it was like uh, it felt amazing to finally be playing for the first time in a couple months. Yeah. Actually, I play all the time here, but like with other musicians, it's a different yeah. story. But we played a fast kind of heavier one. And I was like. Oh my God, I am out of shape with playing. Because once you don't play for a while, you really feel it like in your know. whole, your whole body. That's um, true. <laughs> but yeah. um, that there's a way that you do the lessons that are very like, like we went through, and this was before you did the, the counting stick control book where it was, mm -hmm. you would just tell me and I would just write down simple little things like, you know, the count on a couple little things that made... It just like it's like the clouds parted and it just became it's a you have a great way of like simplifying things mm -hmm. that when you do things alone, uh, like even when we talked earlier and you kind of said you do this, you count like this. It's easy. Sixteenth notes, 16, 16th notes. It's easy. But when you're alone and you're doing this or look at working through a book on your own, it's it can be very like you get in your own head or you just do something wrong. So it's really, really 
helpful, even like you said, maybe not for a long term, not taking lessons with Barry for 10 years kind of thing. But like you, I know, are a big fan of getting people in like, you know, four, eight or 12 weeks, teaching them the method. Then they know what they how to do it. Yeah, they're out the and, door. And, and what I make sure that I do within that 12 weeks is to give them a list of things they need to move on to next and next and next. So yeah. that they've got a list of books, a list of, of uh, you know, flyers, a, a list of biographies to study from, you know, put them in charge of. And I, and, and I do use Joe Morello's methods a lot. You know, when, once we get through past the basics of stick control, and everybody can play the stick control book and play it right. Then we go into Joe's Master Studies book, and it's a, a, it's another game changer because it's based on stick control. It's the next step in stick control, and it's a it's a it's a beautiful book that Joe wrote, and uh, and and it's it's worth every penny. But uh, whatever I don't even know what, what he charges for it now, but uh, but he. Uh, it, it, it'll just give you all that additional information. Fill in the blanks, you know? Yeah. If, if you miss something in the first book or the first in stick control or whatever or in, in the in the uh, lessons with stone, you know, start up with with Joe Joe's books and you and, and you'll find the answer to it right there. Sure. It'll be there somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, all right, Barry. So uh, kind of as we get close to wrapping up here, uh, before we say thank you to like, you know, a couple obvious people that I'm sure you want to you want to thank. Why don't we real quick first say what is the best place to get the book uh, and to maybe get in touch with lessons? I mentioned the email before, but maybe say it again and just, you know, again, best place to get the book, best place to take le- uh, reach out to you for lessons. OK, um, well, you can uh, what I'm doing is I'm doing some first editions of the book before we actually have it printed. So it'll say first edition of the book. And we will, if they ask us to, we'll, I'll sign them for them, you know, so they'll have a signature on the book. I don't think they could cash a check with that, but, <laughs> you know, at least, at least I'll, uh, I'll, I'll personalize the book for them. The, the, the next set of books will be, you know, paid for by the first set of books, you know, that we, sure. we and if they like lessons, same address, uh, my telephone number is 321-297-3042. By the way, I've already gotten that call that you sent my way back from Germany. Oh, yeah. A teacher from Germany that wants to study. And yeah. so uh, we can do a four-week lesson plan, an eight-week lesson plan, or a 12-week lesson plan. In 12 weeks for sure, I can get the, I can get the student ready you know, or the teacher ready to go at it himself and I can give him the right direction to go in, you know, so that he, he gets a, you know, a, a belly full of George Stone, you know, <laughs> sure. And, and, and boy, I'll tell you, once you, once you study with this master, you realize as you go along and, and get more and more of his information in, in, in inside your head, boy, you, you, you feel superior, you know, you yeah. really do. You yeah. feel superior to almost any other drum method that you'll ever study, whether it be in high school or college or anywhere else, you know? Yeah. It, it just works that way, you know? And, Absolutely. And so, yeah, so, and I get, the guy just called me to hold the conversation. We talk about Stone for an hour. And my wife says, are you coming for dinner? And I said, no. Nope. <laughs> well that's that's great so uh i'll put info for barry his email address i think that's a good place to start and his phone number um in the description for this and then that's a great way to start and get in touch with him get Absolutely. the first the signed first edition of the book and you can also get in touch with barry for lessons um and then you know this is just kind of off the cuff barry i, I was looking at the your older book drum lessons with george lawrence stone and there was a um picture of George Lawrence Stone playing, and it said uh, he signed it to you, and I just thought it was really nice. He said, "Barry, I'm very proud of you," and that's what he signed it. Yeah, isn't that nice? I mean, there's just a picture in the back. What that a- was lovely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, George playing the the marimba. Yeah, well, mallet marimba. And, Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and and, and he and I uh, asked him for something for I don't know my put in my yearbook or something. Yeah, and, uh, and he, he he gave me that picture. I still have that picture. That's yeah. awesome. It's uh, quite nice. It means a lot to get 
that sort of, uh, you know, um, confirmation from your from your like, you know, your teacher that like, yeah, OK, I'm, and I get I feel that from you and you say nice things, nice things to me about the show and all this stuff. It feels good oh, to have someone who's such oh, a respected sure. drummer appreciate you. I will have to tell you this and, and for your listeners and for anybody who just falls upon listening to this um, this interview. This man that, that's interviewing me here, Bart, is, is probably the, the most cherished drummer now living because he has taken he has taken the, the craft of drumming and brought it home. Up to now, it's been, you know, a, a modern drummer magazine, which love, they, they love advertisements and, and, uh, you know, and, uh, and uh, other, other uh, sources, you know, even the PASIC group that has a convention once a year can't be doing what Bot's doing because he's doing interviews with drummers about mutual, many, many different subjects, drum subjects, and he's doing them all the time on an ongoing basis. So, you know, what you get from this guy is a complete, you know, a, a complete uh, uh, story of drumming. Now, I will have to tell you this. I have one student. He's an adult student now. He works for a local uh, airplane parts, airplane, airplane parts uh, company here, a very large company out of here. And he takes him, it takes him about an, an hour to drive to work every day. So he says, what I do is I bring my tablet along and I listen to Bart's show on the way there and on the way back. So he says, I listen to two shows a day. I've listened to every one of his podcasts so far. Wow. I said, really? <laughs> that's awesome I, I haven't done that yet no that's he, a lot he said, yeah he said i l listened to every one of bots podcasts and he said it's uh, i feel like i'm getting an, a a uh a, a conservatory education doing that unbelievable well, well thank you thank yeah, you your student and, and, and he's right he's right well that is super nice i mean i i gotta say that whenever i get a compliment from someone like you it's like it it is a big deal uh -huh. just because you're the real deal and i i wish you know, I talk about drums these days more than I play them, which is unfortunate, but I will get back to it. And to hear it from someone like you makes me just love the drums we're, and we're everything. We're definitely going to do it as soon as, as soon as we can get Harry to hold it <laughs> sticks right. I gave him a drum. I said, do you want to do a drum lesson uh, yesterday? He's three. So and he, he's really excited. He said, yes. And I started going, all right, bass drum, snare bass drum snare and then he he grabbed the sticks and said no it's like this da, 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 and started hitting the hi-hat and he was playing like open-handed and like this and i was like and i said no, no no bass drum snare and then he just kept telling me no it's like this so i was like all right well we'll try we'll try a little later <laughs> he's yeah, a little well, young that, that's right no uh, i i've had lots of students who try to tell me that, that i'm playing wrong you know and that they, they, they twist their hands all up and they look like a, they got elephantitis or something and <laughs> And then I say, no, 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 don't hold it like that. Yeah, this is the way. This is the way. That's right. Of course, they're only three years old, so they're, <laughs> yeah. they're forgiven. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whatever. There's plenty of time. Barry, like I said before, a couple of people to thank you as we kind of get close to the end here. Uh, you can talk about them, but uh, I feel like Jason Edwards and Tom Cook. Uh, yeah. And the you, Jason Edwards, Tom Cook, and I, have all become a nice little crew, uh, yeah, obviously. I think <laughs> of yeah, friends. We, we, we got to get out and go to go to one of uh, Jason's concerts. He's a mon monster player. Yeah. Only, only one thing with him, he plays molar. But other than that, he's a hell of a player. You yeah, know? he's a monster drummer and he's a very nice a guy. Drummer and a hell of a guy. And he and he builds a he he makes practice pads. Those Pro Logic practice yeah. pads. And I've never seen a practice pad as good as, as that. I own the uh, the green with the with the green rubber on it, and it's got a, a, a its own rim built in. Yep. I mean, you, the first time I threw it down and it jumped back at me, I, that doubles the speed I threw it down at. I said, "Whoa, what is this? <laughs> I thought I was going to hit myself right in the head." <laughs> yeah. Because yep. it, it's so live. His pads are so live there. You know, and I played the real field pad and the Zildjian pad and a lot of the others. Uh, Vic Firth and so on, but but this is this is the real deal. This pad, that, this Pro Logic pad that Jason uh, produces is, is is the best. It's just the best. It, it, money can buy right now, and definitely, and, and it just will help. Talk about some help, a little extra help from the gallery, you know, from uh, yeah, uh, 
try to play some of those exercises from the stone stone book, the stick and stone book, using one of Jason's pads, and you'll find out just, just what playing drums is all about. Yeah, it's a little bit easier. And then also uh, Tom Cook, who helped us. I mean, just across the board, Tom is a nice guy. Maybe, uh, Barry, you want to just mention a little bit about how Tom helped with the, well, he did, putting uh, the book together. We had uh, we were starting to work on the uh, this book here with the, uh, the you know, the changes and the uh, uh, for, for the stick control book, you know, uh, the, the, the all of the uh, formulas that, that we're using. And the gentleman who was helping us at that time, uh, you know, got a job or something and decided that he'd have to go that way. And Tom just took this thing over in the middle of the, of the book and started writing the general notes and learned uh, as much about it. He went so far as to learn how to use finale, for goodness sake. Mm. Nobody does that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that. That's like that's like learning Einstein's theory of relativity overnight, you know? Yeah. And uh, but. But Tom was able to do that, and he brought me the book in in yeoman's time. I'm still waiting for Je Jason Edwards, by the way. <laughs> He's got a book coming out too, and we'll talk more about that next time. Sure. Uh, but uh, you know, Tom has been wonderful. He's been very helpful to me since I've been ill. Plus, plus, uh, you know, all, all the work on the book. He's a great, great man. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. He's, by the way, he's a hell of a drummer. And, and and I might say he studied with me, but he didn't. His daughter did. See, this was the thing when I had my studio. His, his teenage daughter used to come in for lessons with me. Well, Tom used to sit in on her lesson. I didn't know he was picking my brain. <laughs> getting free lessons. Yeah, I was getting free lessons all that time. <laughs> you know, so That's I, awesome. I told him, I said, you owe me now. You better finish this book for me. Because <laughs> yeah. I gave you four years of free lessons. And and so he's playing now, and he's got his own band, and he plays around town here, and yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's a good man. Well, Barry, let me ask you the very last question, and then I'll let you go. Is sure. would they ever mix y these two books, Stick Control and Counting Stick Control, and just like add the count to the top of Stick Control and alter it? I mean, when I first mentioned it to Barbara Haynes and Stone Granddaughter about, you know, you might be interested in publishing this book maybe as an appendix to stick control. So they'd all be under one cover, you know? And she said, no, she said, I, you know, you and Joe worked on this book and I, I think uh, we, we let you have it. But, you know, we're very, you know, very careful as to who writes using my grandfather's, you know, you know his, uh, his knowledge and his sure. information. So he, she said, I want to see it first. And that's something that's my next step is to make sure that Barbara and the cousins get a chance to see this book. <clears throat> and goodness, it can't be any, any more important to them. Uh, you know, as, as, as uh, uh, talking to Tom on the phone this morning, you know, he brought up the fact, he said, you know, here's the thing, you know, you're going to bring this to the, the Stone family now for approval and so forth. But they have to remember that if, if they're going to buy this book or, or allow you to sell this book under the stone name, they're going to sell more stick control books just because of this book. Yeah. You know, because everybody that once had a stick control book and don't, no longer has it, they're going to look at this book and say, well, now I can play the stick control book. Let me buy another one. And they end up, they'll end up selling a lot more stick control books, I believe. Yeah. And it's a good possibility they will. Sure. Yeah, no, that's interesting. I mean, even as I said it, I was like, well, that w it's nice they said, no, we want you worked on it. We want you to sell it. And uh, I mean, you're not doing this to make millions and millions of dollars. You're doing it really to keep making, like you said, the, the, the run. Yeah, but no, you're really, I mean, I think I, I, I've always understood from you that like you are just trying to get all this info out of your brain and to as many people as humanly possible, which exactly right. Uh, it's, it's, um, I don't know. It, it, it really, it makes you want to play. Just talking to you makes you want to go practice stuff that usually, usually I want to sit down on the drums and just play crazy, you know, messing around stuff or just kind of groove or something, but it makes you better. You, you have kind of a, uh, it, it makes you just want to go do it to play the stuff that you go, it's easy. Just count it like this. It's easy. Just play it. And then you go, Oh, I can do this. And, uh, it makes you want to practice. 
Absolutely, it does. And and uh, yeah, and you you recognize that too, and that's important yep. because you know there's so many people that start out you know with good intentions and figure they're going to do this, and then they, if it got a little difficult, they just say, "Well, I'll work on this particular section tomorrow." No, do it now. Yep. You know, just get it done. I I remember going just one quick uh, story about Mr. Stone. Um, I you know you go in his his studio. I used to go on Wednesday morning, and it was one thing that I didn't realize when I signed up for lessons with him, is that he didn't come to campus. We had to take the subway down to his studio on on Hancock Street every week. So I was going to him, he wasn't coming to me, you know? And I, I thought, man, this is a drag, I gotta get up an hour earlier to get the subway, you know? Yeah. So, but of course it was worth every minute. And uh, so, so Stone was, uh, he was just, you know, teaching in, in his in his normal fashion, and I, I was up in the studio all of a sudden. I was, and I was set up on his rinky tinky drum set that had the still had the palm tree uh, picture on the front of the thing. You've seen those mm-hmm. of the nineteen twenties, I guess. And uh, so I'm practicing this thing, and he comes in the studio, and he go, walks out. He Im- almost immediately walks in, and he said, "What's that you're playing there?" I said, well, it was just a little solo thing I was working on. He said, didn't I hear you play this uh, last week? I said, yeah, I've been working on it. He said, no. Once you learn it, forget it. Stop it. I don't want to hear that anymore. You know how to play that. I heard you played it last week. I heard you play it this week. Stop it. Don't play anything you already know. You're wasting time. Wow. Play something you don't know. Play Interesting. something you don't know and, 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 if you, if you, and, and, and just work on that. Then once you get that down, forget that and go into something else. Always try to learn something more difficult, but don't play it twice. He said that bothered me. And he walked out of the studio. And he wow. went a, cu- a cup of coffee before he came back. Oh, man. So I, I obviously stopped practicing that groove, you know? Yeah. Once you learn it, forget it. There's the... Yeah, uh... That's right. Well, well, why are you wasting your time doing something you already know how to do? Jeez, that pushes you. I mean, that makes you go forward because we all I get we all get so comfortable doing things that are we're good at and uh, everyone's guilty of that. But uh, just push forward. Yeah, that's right. You know, and that that's what that's that was his slogan, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Barry, um, again, for, so everyone knows Barry James drummer at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to talk about lessons, getting books, and then from there you can figure out address and, and all that stuff on how to pay. Um, but it's, you're not going to get a better deal. Um, Barry truly, uh, I am so happy we became friends and are continuing to be friends and have phone conversations and, um, and you know, hello to your wife, Elaine and your, you know, your family and everything. I think it's, it's just awesome that, uh, to be able to connect with you. And, and, and you're so fortunate to have the family you have. They're wonderful. Yep. That's awesome. And, uh, and I don't, uh, I don't take it for granted. And again, um, Love every minute hanging out with you, Barry. And I hope you get some new students from this. I hope you sell some books. And um, just in general, I'm always happy to have you on the podcast. And we'll do it again. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, we'll do it again later when Jason finishes up that other book. And you guys can... We'll get uh, the other book. We'll we'll, we'll get it through you, too. We'll we'll give you you all all the scoop on it. It'll be an interesting book. Yeah. And I got one more in the back of my head. I don't know if I have time for it, but... There's one more thing that has to do with Stone's polyrhythms and how he developed his polyrhythms. And it, 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 it's, it'd be more like a booklet than a book, but I could show people how he, what, what he used for a, a, a template, if you will, sure. uh, to, to draw up all his, uh, you know, his uh, polyrhythms five against nine and 11 against three and, you know, all that kind of thing. And yeah. it's that difficult. The, and then, like I say, I can teach it in a short period of time. But, you know, I think I'd like to spend more time just introducing people to the stone book as far as the uh, the uh, uh, stick control exercises. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, if you don't get it out of your head and onto paper or on video, then it goes away. So I think it's important that you do this and that we talk about it and all this stuff. So, yeah, we will. We'll yeah. Have, you know, we, we'll get in touch as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, and uh, maybe do a video uh, when we got the second book done and ready to go. We might all get together and do a video. Absolutely. All right, Barry, thank you for being here. 
Thank you, Bart. Thank you. God bless and take care of that wonderful family of yours. Awesome. Thanks, Barry.